everyone. This is Patty Conklin. Thank you so much for joining me with Ask Patty Live. I have my beautiful, beautiful guest on, Felicia Bender from uh, Colorado, on with me tonight. I think that you and I go back to 1998, maybe? Is that correct? I think it was even before that, actually. I think it was more like 94, 95. Wow. wow. Yes, time does travel, doesn't it? It does. It travels immensely <laughs> fast. Yes. So at that time, you were at the University of Missouri, and yes. you were taking a few classes um, of mine that I was teaching out there, and the Lord knows, I can't even remember what they were way back when. Um, but we got to meet up again in September, um, of this year and that was awesome out in Colorado so I am going to hand it to you I would like you to tell our audience about you and about your sojourn from uh, 95 on what what got you to the point where you were on Ask Patty Live what brought you here well, um, we'll, we'll do the Reader's Digest condensed version, there you I go. hope, okay. um, of that. And, and when I met you, Patty, I was really going through a tumultuous time in my life. And that's, I'm sure, when a lot of people collide with someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was when they need it the most. And, um, and I needed it the most at that point. I was, uh, in the late 90s, I was um, experiencing some turbulence in my marriage, and I wasn't quite ready to, to, to deal with that. I, my mother was, um, was dying of, of cancer. And we had had a, a kind of split in our relationship. We had been close uh, most of our lives, and, and yet she was a, a very addicted person. I see. And so she she kind of went down that that path, and uh, toward the end of her life, kind of cut herself off from from people, me me included. And so when I got a call that she had a malignant brain tumor, uh, I really she hadn't been speaking to me in, in months, and it was very difficult for me. Um, to deal with that because I had been very close with her. So it was a, a, I was also finishing my dissertation, finishing my doctorate. I had no idea what was next for me. And it was a kind of cataclysmic emotional meltdown. It was, who am I? What am I doing? I know I need to be doing something else. So I really went, I, I took your classes uh, to learn as much as I could about energy, about healing, about uh, that sort of world. I took other classes uh, in energy healing. I became certified uh, in pranic healing. All right. And Yes, I be and I, I worked with uh, with individual clients for several years doing that, and yet there was always a bit of a missing link for me. I'm I'm a very practical minded person, and so one of the things that really attracted me to the pranic healing was that it was a very systematized way of doing something that that everyone could do it. Now you you of course work with levels of of mastery, um, needless to say, and yet everyone could do it, and I really um, I really appreciated that part of it. And so, for me, uh, I kind of flash forward, and I, I did end up getting a divorce. Um, I uh, got a real estate license. I began to sell real estate, uh, do other things to expand myself. And then I ran across uh, a book, literally, I'm sure a lot of your, your listeners can uh, appreciate just walking through the bookstore and having a book literally almost jump out, you know into your hand and that happened to me and it wasn't a book about numerology it w it had numerology uh, aspects in it and it fascinated me because I am I hate math I I really um, am a math phobic so uh -huh. for these for numerology to uh, be something that that attracted me is is a really um, ironic thing right. for me right and and so what happened was, is I was able to just do the math and very much like the pranic healing, it was like, you know, anyone can do this. And it was so undeniably accurate. So I started really, really consuming that and, and, and learning as much as I could. And I started working with, with other people doing this. And it was kind of that missing link for me and working with other people um, going through transitions and that. And it helped me heal a lot of things on a practical level. Um, it helped me understand myself give me some validation about some of uh, my life and my choices and the in the and the way I am right and and also help me understand my mother it was a really good tool for forgiveness 
for me. Wow. Um, so that's really kind of how I got in, in this in, in this place. So I, I really am passionate about it. I love helping other people. It seems to really resonate when it does with people. And uh, it's something that you could, it's a great tool. It's something to use in tandem with the vibrational, meta, you know, the color works and other things that, that you can use to uh, to do your personal evolution. Right. And so it's, it's simply a, a tool that I think is wonderful for everyone to use. It gives you a parameter around around your life that um, that usually you're kind of guessing about yeah, right, if right. Have, yeah if you have those themes and those keywords and you can look at that and see kind of what what your most purposeful existence is going to be and then what the challenges and obstacles are also going to be yeah. and so it's really good with relationships too it helps you understand other people awesome we're talking about numerology and I laugh again because we're doing fours here uh, of our 404, 474, 4294. So every, every segment begins with a four, ends with a four. And, um, and as you so beautifully told me after my um, grandbabies were born that they were fours also. So what is numerology? How does it really play into our lives? Well, uh, that's always a, a, a fantastic question because, well, numerology basically, uh, in my opinion, is the science of, of numbers. And the there's a, numerology has been around for centuries. Uh, different countries use different kinds of numerology, so mm -hmm. it is an art and a science. And we in the Western world, uh, in the, the numerology that I use personally, comes from Pythagoras. He uh, he was around, you know, 2,500 years ago. He was, okay. he was, uh, you know, you know him. No, uh, I don't <laughs> know him. Go back for a minute. Like, pa yeah. Pythagoras? Pythagoras. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, that's where that's where we're, we're starting. Okay, yeah. So Pythagoras, um, he 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 was the one who did the Pythagorean theorem uh, of of geometry. Got he it. He was a mystic, uh, quite a, a thinker of of all kinds of theories. And his basic his basic thrust with numerology was that the whole world that that, that we are all composed of of frequency and vibration right and that numbers themselves hold a frequency and a vibration so rather than just having a quantity so one apple two apples three apples you've got you know the one two and three but they also carry with them a certain meaning uh, with the vibration and an influence so it's kind of what I consider a vibrational pattern is set up when you are born the, the, considering the date you are born it, it offers you kind of a matrix uh, that that you um, are born into so with numerology we we do certain things with your birth date and then also uh, with your name because that also imprints you with that vibratory influence so I kind of think of it like um, gravity or cell phone reception or the cloud or any of the stuff that we're doing on, on Skype it, it's happening it's there uh, whether we know it, it, it's affecting us or not. Right, right. It's all built into that whole matrix. L let me back up for a minute. When we're looking at um, numerology, are there specific numbers that affect us more greatly than others? And does it go to 11 or is it 22? Or what is it? Talk to me about that. How do we really set up the basis of numerology and are some numbers more important than others, let's say in terms of world leaders? Well, yes and no. Okay, what what I'd like to say is is the way that the way I use numerology, my experience with numerology is the basic numbers are one through nine, and then you have master numbers that are eleven, twenty two. I also consider thirty three to be a master number, and I've actually done some re, uh, a reading of forty four. Okay. And Right. And I don't have a lot of experience with those, so I don't talk about those much. But what, so you're always digiting things down to a one through nine digit number. Okay. And the master numbers bring with them, again, no number is better or worse than anything else. That's what everyone is like, oh, my life path number, you know, oh, you're a two. Oh, is that bad? You know, everyone goes there first. <laughs> Everybody wants to be in that, in that yeah. one or that 11 or 22 master number. Yeah. And what I like to say about that is that uh, the master numbers are no better or no worse than, than the normal or regular numbers one through nine, however you want to say that. What they do is they bring with them a, a they are undeniably a spiritual path 
a spiritual, more more highly spiritual vibration. Number one, and number two, they they bring with them uh, more um, potential. In your life, you're going to be pushed to achieve more and do more, but you're also going to be given more intense and significant challenges in order to get there. So really, in essence, it's not easy. So the master number was like, ooh, I want to be a master. Well, you know, when you want to be a master, you gotta you got to take the lumps that go with it. And, it, and they're often... Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're often a, it's a very uh, strenuous journey. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah. Wow. And so when we're born with this number, is that kind of the concept that we're given um, in terms of the, the constrictions or the limitations or the expansions of what we're doing with our life? Exactly. You know, Kat, Patty, the way the way I see it, and I'm sure other numerologists would see it differently. And yet, the way uh, the way what it means to me is that we all check in here to uh, uh, to learn something, something that we haven't learned before. Right. So um, I I feel that it is in what what number you are your life path number that you are born under is a conduit to your your big life lessons that you come in to learn and so for instance um, you know your grandsons have come in as a number four life path and the four in numerology as a life path and let me let me also say that there are a variety of numbers in your chart that um, that tell you different influences and different things about you if you're only going to know one your life path number is the one you should know because uh, in my experience it basically tells you what you checked in to, to do what your life purposes and then it'll tell you those challenges and tendencies and obstacles that you'll have so for instance with that four uh, in my experience the four is what I would call the teacher they are ultimately a very wise teacher and they have come here to develop a sense of stability and process in whatever they do so we also understand in numerology that the thing that we come here to do is never going to be the easiest right right so so that is is up front um, what what happens. We can look at that and go, okay. So a four life path might it might struggle for a while before they understand that they can't skip steps or they can't lie on the couch and nap all day. Right. <laughs> it's right, a right. hard working number. It is a it is the number of hard work. These people are very very um, structure foundation. They they make great architects. Uh, the systems builders, they're wonderful with that. They are like, uh, you know, sponges with knowledge. And so you, you've got all of these all of these parameters around what the optimal is going to look like when you're going to feel your best um, as a four life path. These people don't, they're, they're more like, they're more rule followers. They don't like chaos at all. <laughs> makes them really uncomfortable. <laughs> Cute. So, Cute. Yeah, so it, it's when you can start just keying in on those on those aspects, um, it really can cut to the chase to a lot of things that you think you know um, maybe just throw away items or this or that. It helps you also understand your your child or your grandchild, right? And um, and to to be able to support them on their on their path. One of the things that amuses me when I look at a number four and when you're talking about you know um, uh, rule followers. Um, uh -huh. Like, I won't jaywalk. I mean, if you're supposed to cross the street at one place, then I want to cross the street at that place because that's where you're supposed to cross the street. And right. so I've never been one who's going to, you know, if it says don't cross this line, I don't cross this line. However, uh -huh. I then flip into executive mode where I don't consider, um, you know, I make the rules. If I don't like what's going on, I make them instead of follow them. Um, right. So I'll follow them to a certain extent, and then if I don't like them and and uh, I feel like they're restricting or limiting or whatever, then I take control and and make them. Is that a typical four? I think we did your number, and you're not a four. Aren't you a five? Ah, good question. I think the I boys think you are, are fours. Well, we should we should go through real quickly though, so that people who are listening go, well, how do you figure this out? How do you <laughs> like how do you figure science? this out? I'll, uh, I'll, I'm willing to give up my my birth date and and all of that. Uh, okay. Yes, I, I'm. You can use someone else. No, I that, know that's, that's okay. That's, you know that's okay. We'll um, we'll use me. It, okay, great. So what we'll do is for those out there, if you got if you have a 
pen and paper in front of you, you can do this for your own birth date. So all I need is your full date of birth. Okay. Um, my birth date is August 20, 1957. Okay. And so those of you who are listening, you will add this all together like a long math problem. So you would go 8 plus 2, so that's 10, 11, and then you add the 9, so that's 20, and I'm going to go uh, 25, and then you add the 5, so that's uh, 25. Yeah. And then plus 7 equals 32, correct? Correct. Okay, and I always, because like I said, I don't like math. <laughs> So I always have to really, really check my work, just like all of you should. So yeah. because if you're just one number off, it really skews your results. And so what we have is a 32. And in numerology, you always have to digit it down to that one digit number. So you take that 32 and you do it again. So you go 3 plus 2 equals 5. Okay. So okay. I was 5. So Patty is a 5. A 5 is much, much different than a 4. Yeah. Yeah. You are the one who, yeah, you might, you might not want to jaywalk, but you are certainly going to make up your own rules. <laughs> because the five, I call you uh, the adventurer. You are the freedom seeker. You are all about, uh, you are here to develop your sense of fearlessness mm -hmm. um, within the confines of some self-discipline. Okay. Right. So what happens is the five is this very, I kind of call it, uh, the people who are on the five life path are so vivacious. Um, they're, they, they live kind of without a filter in, in some ways. I kind of call it the ADHD experience. These right. people usually don't understand that everybody doesn't experience the world the way that they do because you are experiencing everything all at once. It's very hard for you to filter things out. Right. Or at least early on, you know, as we go through numerology also gives us really great parameters around our stages of maturity and development and how that works too, which I love. But the, the, the five is much more, um, you are much more of the the do not fence me in. Correct. That's that's your mantra. Yeah. And so you you need that independence. You need that space. And uh, you are a person who you know you are the the world traveler. You are you are the one who is always doing. You are the adventure seeker. And so what also happens for the five life path is sometimes it can go just the opposite. So again, we're challenged with those things. And I know some five life paths who are are you know hyperventilate at the the idea of even packing their suitcase. You know right. they 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 trip over into being fearful rather than fearless. Yeah. And really at the end of the day, what your life purpose is, is to show others by your example, how to live their most fearless uh, life. Yeah. I, I know that uh, in so much of my life, I've always taken the top positions. I couldn't take mid-level positions because I couldn't Absolutely. stand the idea of somebody telling me what I had to do. Um, yeah. I'd rather take the pressure of the top job and tell everybody else what to do, nicely of course, but, um, but so that I could make the rules. Um, because my philosophy in life is if you don't like the rule that's set in front of you, then you change the rule. You don't just sit and gripe about it. You get involved, you get active, you become an activist, you do whatever you need to do in order to get that rule changed. And maybe that's very self-serving, but I also feel like when people are willing to get involved and, and really expand the horizons and, and be that freedom seeker, um, that, that they get a lot more accomplished in life than, um, than not. So you're absolutely right, and don't fence me in. Uh, the idea of being fenced in for me is, is something that's uh, beyond intolerable. Um, when, when, you get a, when you get a master number such, such as an 11, um, you know, do we have many 11s walking the earth, and what kind of people are they? Talk to me about those master numbers. Those master numbers, we haven't had two very important uh, 11 twos in our world right now, and they happen to be Mr. and Mrs. Obama. Really? Yes. Wow. And, yes. So um, the 11 two, and that's why 
he's the the eleven two brings with it um, the two is all about uh, love, harmony, service. Um, they're uh, a very much the diplomat. They're uh, they're they're the mediator basically. And the interesting thing is is that um, M- Michelle and Barack are very very super emotionally sensitive Mm -hmm. as that master number and as that two and then what happens with the 11 is they're a little bit shy actually and so the 11 the master number is really forcing them into the spotlight it's really forcing them into into this world arena the and the reason that he's able to do that uh out of you know out of the realm of the two which is a push pull because the two would would rather vomit than get up in front right of people you know and talk they the two uh, at the, the the regular two without the eleven is very much the behind the scenes person. Hmm. They're the the ones that really thrive in setting up that win win situation, but they don't want to be under the spotlight um, right. with that. Right. And and so that the the master number is really going to push you out of your comfort zone all your life. And that the the two the, the, the master numbers also in my experience really give you this nervous energy. This energy that you're never doing enough and it's not quite right and all of those things. And yet for for uh, the presidents, I, I believe now I'd have to check it again. I'm going from memory, but I believe Bill Clinton was also an eleven two. Wow. Well we, yeah. we have a question. Um, yes. We have a woman asking, please walk through again how to add the birth date. Right. Um, so would you please walk through that again and um, and show me or show our guests uh, how to do that. Um, at, eventually we'll reach a point where you'll actually be able to do it live. But uh, would you explain Absolutely. it again verbally for us? Thanks. Absolutely. So what you do is you'll take your full birth date and we're using Patty's as an example and hers is August 20th 1959 so of course she changed the August into the 8 and then what you'll do is just add all those numbers together like a long math problem just like you did in elementary school so you'll go 8 plus 2 plus 0 because that's the 20 plus 1 plus 9 plus 5 plus 7 and when you add all of those up you will get the number 32 and always in numerology, we will digit down to a one-digit number. Even if it's 10 or 20, even if it has a zero there, you still have to keep digiting that down. So a t- if you got a 10, you're not a 10. You would be a 1 plus 0, which is 1, a 2 plus 0, which is 2, because sometimes that's confusing as well. So if you have that 32, you then uh, add that together again uh, as an addition problem. So that's 3 plus 2, and you'll get a 5. So that's your one-digit number is the 5. Wow. So hoping that makes sense. It makes sense. What would make a 22? A 22, Oprah Winfrey is a 22. Oprah is a 22. Really? Okay. Yep. She's got a 22-4 going on, and she, to me, is the quintessential 22. And what the 22 brings to it is that double two energy. Uh, it's very, it's again, it's very service-oriented, very love-centered, uh, very mediative. And yet then it, it tr- transitions over to that four. The four is all the teacher. She has said in interviews that she's always known from early on that she's a teacher. Wow, and I think that's uh, and if you look at her whole chart, it's it's a really fascinating journey that she's had. Definitely. But um, yeah. it, it's she the the twenty two four as opposed to the eleven two. Now I, I look at the twenty two four and and say that these are people who are meant to make a a, a big difference in the lives of people on a on a grand scale in their practical, tangible day to day existence. Unlike with an 11-2, often it's a little more what I would call etheric, mm-hmm. um, because the 11-2 is actually a very artistic number. A lot of 11-2, Madonna is an 11-2. Um, they, often in 11-2, there's this uh, very, they're very musically inclined, very uh, art, art um, do a lot of art, and it's this experiential energy that they bring they bring you an experience that simply shifts your energy yeah and and 11 2 in my experience I've known people who for instance are surgeons who are in 11 2 and I feel they even just energetically imprint what they do uh, in the in the 
in the room with sure. what they're so there's stuff that you can't you can't really verify you know you can't do that but like with with uh, Oprah she is I mean with her magazine with her show she has changed the lives of millions of people to uh, on, a, on a to better themselves on a practical day-to-day -day basis Absolutely. and that is really her calling yeah definitely in your book redesign your life you talk about how you use numerology to help you shift the way you think about certain things in your life tell me about your book redesign your life when did that come out it came out in June 2012 and um, very excited about it it's kind of gaining traction now you know it takes a while your book is coming out soon so it is. you'll get to, to do all that as well um, and basically it is a user-friendly um, practical guide to using numerology in, in, in a practical way in your day-to-day -day life so I go over I, I talk I talk about it I frame it kind of in an HDTV sort of way um, that that you can you you are redesigning your life and you can do uh, kind of a, a remodeling job you can do, do a redecoration which would be the smallest or you could do you know a, a renovation uh -huh. and so I really attempt to go through and, and give you some really great uh, examples of how that might look and how you can use your numbers to kind of get a shortcut to what you want to do so I go over the life path numbers in much more detail show you how to apply that in some ways then I could the next section is personal year cycles which a lot of people find very very helpful and in numerology we believe that we all go through nine year cycles uh, throughout our lives and if you know the basic the, the basic defining qualities of each of the the numbers one through nine then you can really apply that also to the personal year that you're in so for instance if you're in a personal year uh, number nine that is the end of a cycle so always people uh, will experience um, some sort of turbulence and 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 what I mean by that is it's it's again it's the ending so it's a reevaluation of your life it's it's oftentimes when divorces happen right. uh, oftentimes when sometimes a child is born so it's it's not it doesn't have to be bad is what I'm trying to say. right a lot right. of people are like oh this sounds horrible <laughs> It's not horrible. It's just it's the it's it's closure and then you're and then you're starting something new. And often the thing is is that it's really scary because you have to let go of 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 what's not working for you right. without having a really clear idea of what's next. And I like to talk about it in terms of I mean Patty do you know people who are in a marriage or in a relationship and they can't break up with that person until they've got someone else in the wings? Right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I see it a lot. So yeah. A lot of us operate that way. The nine personal year will not allow that. It it makes you break up and do what's best for you, get it together, and then in that one, uh, you you are starting new beginnings. You are starting to get a clearer vision about what your next you know, what your next cycle is going to be like. So oftentimes it's appealing away. It's it's demanding that you let go, and there are, there are some you know some often very transitional time for people. So if you know that that's happening, you can actually go with the flow of that and not resist it because if you think that everything is just the same every year and it's going to be status quo status quo you, you're going to experience much more pain during that year and if you can go okay this is my releasing year this is where I you know I got <laughs> sure. to really you know make these decisions and that's good and and for all of the, the personal year cycles we've got you know the one is where you're initiating the five is this kind of you know crazy year where you're going to feel really outgoing you know those sorts of things well that, uh, that was going to be my question if if you're not in a nine year you know let's say you're in a seven year is yeah. it like oh my goodness I have to wait two more years before um, I'm actually able to um, to move into a transitional state do I have to just suck it up and and live with it for another two years or I mean what happens if you're in a seven year or a six year instead of a nine yeah because the seven personal year it's funny you should say that one because the seven I notice with clients is oh almost as emotionally or as transitional as a nine because what the seven is about it's a it's a spiritually 
seeking year. It is a year of introspection. It is a year of gaining knowledge. It is a year of study. It's a year where you're going to feel much more quiet. So it's like one of those years where if you if you think that this is the year that you're going to be getting that brand new job and making it happen and getting out there, uh-huh. you can lay you can lay the groundwork for it in the seven year, and yet it probably isn't going to to really take off until the next year, which is an eight personal year, which is all about money and all about implementation and all of that. So it's really great to be able to have that as a light framework. That, and, and again, it doesn't mean you're not gonna you're just lying around meditating all the time. It just means it's a very internally um, growth period for you. So what I hear you saying though is that you really have to understand the life path of each given year so that you know basically you're taking your if at fifty five we're dividing it by nine to find out when my next nine transitional year is. And the way the way the easy way to figure that out is to take your birth date. Uh huh. And so we, as an example, to do your personal year, we would take eight because that's yours, and then twenty. And instead of the year you were born, don't don't do that. That's just for your uh, life path number. What we're going to add together now is the current year. Okay. okay. So we'll add twenty thirteen. Okay. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So you are in a seven personal year. I am in a. I, oh, great. But and it's it's all good though. See what you're doing though, Patty, is all the things that you're doing. You're setting up the, the Skype. You're you're doing different things. You're setting the foundation. You're learning all about this. Your book is this is the perfect year to finish your book and get it up and running because then next year your eight personal year is all about it flying off the shelf. Okay. 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 So, so it's it's that year. It's not that you can't be doing things. It's not that you can't be at you know actively moving. But it's more of a learning process. It's a more of really getting a handle around these new skills, talents, all the things that you want. And then the next year is really when the financial remuneration will right. hopefully come into play. Right. Right. Well, what if that's already into play, and then personal life isn't into play yet? So, <laughs> so. Be we want them reversed. Um, we have a question of of uh, how do we know what year we're in? And I think you just explained that. But uh, do it one more time because you're really just taking the birth date and then the yeah. current year. So exactly. would you walk through so that one your, more time for it's us? Your day and your month plus the current year. And then always again digit it down, and it, and it's also interesting because this this your personal year goes from January first. Of the of the new year through December 31st, it does not go from birthday to birthday, okay? Because some people get confused with that. Right. So it's throughout the year. I will say though that the energy of your personal year will intensify around your birthday. Yep, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. So so as you go through your teaching and uh, and working with people and counseling people and helping them to understand where they are uh, in their birth year and and you know what their birth year is and where they are in the state, what kind of um, suggestions? What kind of um, counseling do you give uh, when we're talking about people? Um, that are really struggling. Let's say they're let's say they're a, a seven and they're in their um, fifth birth year. Mm-hmm. I know. Let me rephrase that. They're a seventh birth year, but they're in number five right now um, in terms of their one through nine. Okay. And, so, and they're struggling. And they're well. And it's interesting because I do know the interesting thing is what I what I talk to people about is so if you're a seven life path, you are uh, who I would consider uh, the seeker. Uh huh. And it is a high spiritual vibration. I mean, you know, we do have things in our culture. Lucky number seven. You know, we have different um, ways that we think about numbers, don't we? Right. And the seven is is the spiritual seeker. It's a very interesting um, life path. Because it is, this, these people uh, who are a seven life path are very highly refined 
people. They are they have a very data driven analytical mind and very very intelligent, okay? And then also the the caveat to that is that they're also super psychic. And their their task in in this lifetime is to meld both of those gifts together. And that may sound really easy, <laughs> right? But it's right. not. And a lot of seven life paths will go one direction or the other, super in your in your head or just total spiritual vagabond. And you know, they need to meld the two. It's a very internal journey. Because so, they're here, they're here to develop their sense of trust, right? Mostly right. in themselves and others, and openness. And so they're going to struggle with those things in their lives. So let's let's look at a seven as a high intuitive uh, life path. Um, mm -hmm. We know I've got a fair amount of intuition. Being a five, how does that how does that come into play? Um, when you've got a five who tends to make their own rules instead of following anybody else's rules and that high intuition level how would that play in because what I hear is that a five is um, more of a uh, you know don't fence me in and and um, let me make my own rules how does intuition play into that I mean is there any rhyme or reason to that. It's interesting because all numbers, uh, I mean, I think all people are intuitive. Um, sure. it, it's just a matter of development, and yet some ha come in, you know. I mean, you obviously have, have extreme gifts in, the, in that capacity. And so, you, you, I, what I love about numerology and what I love about just working with people is that it gives you a framework and yet you're bringing with it your your geography your education your your it, unique skills and talents and what what happens is is that you have a framework patty around you as this because i've i've known you for a while and n not personally personally but i've known of you for a while right. and you are you i mean didn't you leave home at a very early age yes i did yeah, yeah. absolutely and you you are that freedom seeker and a lot of a lot of times what happens I find that the five life path is is somewhat volatile it is this because you're here to experience everything in in this physical world in this tactile way you want to taste it and you want to feel it and you want to touch it and you right. want to you know and and so there are aspects of excess and of a, a, escapism that can happen with a five. There are addictive qualities that can come in with a five, whether it's overwork, over travel, sex, drugs, alcohol, anything like that, because right. the five is always looking for the next the next high, really, right. because right. you're very, very tactically oriented. Yeah. yeah. And, and so it what happens is is if I'm talking to someone, what I would do is say, So what do you so what's so what's not working for you? I mean, it, it's almost like the Dr. Phil, how's that working for you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of exactly. thing. And yet, you, you know, I would say, okay, what, what, why are you here? What's not working for you? And then we would key into to some of the positive elements and then some of the challenges that maybe, because what happens when people, when it's not working for people, they're usually defaulting over into that kind of dark side of, right. of what, and because it is a, a draw. Um, for that. So, for instance, a six life path is a very nurturing, very visionary person, but they can default into total perfectionism and self-righteousness. And so if we can identify those things that a person may be experiencing, and sometimes I get these real ahas because it, if you can just even place it in, in words, um, it, it, it clears away a lot of that clutter. Right, right. We have, we have somebody who wrote in and said, oh my God, she is so on. Trust is a huge issue and she's a seven. <laughs> and she's the seven life path. So yeah, she's, she's, definitely, uh, she's definitely feeling that. I want Felicia for you to go ahead and give your website and where people can get your book. Great. Um, you can go to my website, which is FeliciaBender.com, and that's spelled F-E-L-I-C-I-A-B-E-N-D-E-R.com, and you can uh, get the book right there, and it goes. it's uh, available through Amazon. You can look at it through Amazon as well. There's also a nice link up at the, in the nav bar called Free, and you can go in there and listen to an audio, a very brief description of your own life path numbers. And we're not doing any details right okay. now. Okay. So. Hi. You're on Ask Patty Live. Hi, Patty. Hi. What's your question? 
My question is this. Um, if you have two people that are life past seven, okay. how difficult does that become in the relationship? Oh, great question. <laughs> Felicia, can you, uh, can you answer that one? Sure. Well, um, it, it just, what I like to say, and it's wonderful, I'm actually teaching a workshop in, in a week about, uh, about relationships, and um, so this is a perfect question. Actually, the seven is compatible with another seven. Uh, they're a natural match, numerologically speaking. Now, I'd, I'd want to know other numbers in your chart to see uh, the other matches or, or, or challenges with that. And yet, what's going to happen is, is and I think this is, you know, we can all say this overall. If you're both sevens, you have to be an optimal seven in order to be getting along with each other in a, in a profound way. If you've got two sevens together, you're going to have a very intense relationship. If you're on the same page and if you are working with your trust issues and your openness issues, the thing about the seven is that they kind of want a relationship, but then they kind of don't. Okay, so that's what you really have to understand about yourself and about the partner is that you both need your downtime, you need isolated time, and you can't take that personally. And if you both understand that and you structure that within, in your relationship, you are going to thrive together as long as you're both, on, again, working within the positive elements of, of your life path and, um, and working together and communicating on that and developing your sense of trust uh, with each other you, is a huge gift, to be a huge gift. Wow, how's that help? Well, that's interesting because, um, you know, <laughs> one person is distrustful, so it becomes a challenge. Okay. And that's what I've struggled with. It's like I've heard this before, where both, you know, both should be incredibly compatible, but it's, you know, on, on some levels, yes, but on other levels, no. But I think what Felicia said that is important is the optimal, uh, the optimal ten, uh, the optimal sevens. Um, right. And and Felicia, can you go into that a little bit more? Well, I, and what I'd like to to mention is is this, and this is really important, and I think you're bringing up a great point. Sometimes we can be perfect matches, and it's just not. It's it's why we are we're in our each other's lives are to teach us a lesson and then move on. And and so, you know, sometimes we get in, in this idea that relationships are supposed to last forever. And I think right. often, especially with two sevens, you may be in each other's uh, lives for that particular reason. And if one of you or the other is not trusting, if and I also, also say that no one can have an optimal relationship with anyone if either of you uh, are struggling with mental health issues or with addictions. And so if that if that's part because a seven life path when they're struggling can also fall into into some addictions um, substance substance addition, uh, addictions and I don't know if that uh, if that's something no, that's, that you're working with not, but no. um, so again I I can look at people who have you know an optimal chart together and yet it's just not meant to happen that way um, you're supposed to learn what you can from each other and then and then move along and maybe part of it is being able to let go and say you know this is not working for me and I need to empower myself to uh, to move to a different uh, relationship. Caller okay. thank you I hope we helped you thank you for calling in okay, you uh, okay. proved our system works yay <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you okay so I mean people really do need to be aware I'm always going to go back to the vibration uh, mediation of how are our lives coming together in terms of our vibration and obviously life path comes into play uh, with that so so are we able to heighten a life path uh, with our frequency if we're shifting our frequency if we're allowing our frequency to flow uh, in a in an easier manner is it is it likely that we're able to make whatever life path we're in a more successful or a more uh, flowing life path uh, absolutely and you know Patty you bring up a great point and I think that your work exemplifies this as well we're all here to to blaze through certain things for ourselves personally and yet really at the end of the day we're all here to 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 raise the vibration 
of, of, of ourselves and everyone around us. And so when we are doing, doing what we came here to do, even though it is going to be challenging, it is going to be difficult, you are, I, I think that with numerology in general, part of what I will say to everyone is that you have a gift to give. And your numerology can kind of define, can can help you define um, what that, what the core of that is. Wow. And yet, you know, if you're a nine life path, you're a humanitarian by nature. Um, you know, there's there's each life path is it really is about giving, uh, both to yourself, but but to the world as well. And I think that that's when you're raising your vibration, is is when you're keyed into a more meaningful, purposeful existence. Right. So any other way that folks can reach you? Do you have a phone number they can call, or is it easier to reach you through your web? It's really easy to do it through the web. Just do the contact, and I, I will get right back with you. Okay. Hi. Thank you for calling Ask Patty Live. What's your question? Hi, Patty. This is Cheryl in Orlando. Hi, Cheryl. I have a quick question. I know we're about wrapping up here. It looks to me like my master number. If you go by your the number on your the name on your birth certificate uh -huh. and your date of birth, that comes the the name is an eight and the date of birth is a seven. You put those together, you got a fifteen. Would that be considered the master number of fifteen and reduce it to seven? Well, I, I'd have to talk with you more about what what we mean by life path number, and then and then the and then the the name number. We aren't even dealing with the name right now. So if <laughs> oh, if I you think. if you do uh, if you add just your birth date together, what number do you get? Seven. A seven. Okay, so if it's your birth date, then you are a seven life path, and we've been talking about about you wonderful sevens. Um, and so what we would need to we would need to get much more depth because what happens is 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 with the with the name we give each letter a numerical equivalent, and then we yep. and then we add that that way. So it's a little more detailed. So Cheryl. Okay. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us tonight and tuning in. And uh, Cheryl, thank you so much. It's good to hear your voice. Thanks for checking in. Thank Thanks for everything. Thank All you, right. Felicia. Thanks thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so folks can go to FeliciaBender.com and uh, order your book, Redesign Your Life. I'm going to go on board and... Uh, order it also because it sounds wonderful and I just uh, thank you so much for being a part of things much love thank I you. really appreciate you being on and we'll talk soon